Laney. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. Two sisters who love family, traditions, and all things Southern. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. Hey, Lainey. Hi, Laura Beth. Well, we had a lot of fun with our episode last week. Oh my gosh, so much fun. We've gotten a lot of fun messages of y'all that are excited about the book we talked about. Um, which fork do I use with my bourbon? Love it. Which, just as a side note, you still got a couple of days to enter our giveaway of a signed hardcover copy of that. So That's a true prize yeah, for so somebody. Follow us on Instagram. Look for the post that is the book cover, and you can find the details to enter there. But one of the um, themes, I think, that stood out to a couple of listeners, and I think is a really good follow-up for us to mention, was, okay, love what y'all talk about. Um, Love the angle of, you know, kind of using our um, experience with foods to grow our Our taste buds and our palate, right? To acquire more taste towards bourbons, just like we would towards cheese was our example. Or wine or whatever direction you're trying to grow. But where do you even begin? Where do you, like, what are your first bourbons to even try? If you, if you want. That's a fair question. I mean, if bourbon or whatever it is that you're growing your palate towards touches your lips, you're learning. Sure. But if you don't even know, if you're walking into a store this week and going, I want to at least try something. And it's so overwhelming. It's it's very overwhelming. We were in a store this week even, and we probably spent 10 minutes, maybe even more in the aisle, just kind of looking and surveying to see what they had. So it still can be overwhelming. So we have come up in collaboration with Peggy No Stevens, a list of the top five bourbons to start with. Okay, these Just are your to get growing. These are your starter bourbons. These are going to be lighter or lower proof. Um, and so it's just kind of a nice warm up, if you yeah. will. And you might love these for the rest of your life. This is not just starters to then bridge you to others. Right, you may stay. You may love these and never need to go anywhere. So, uh, number one, Basil Hayden. Yep. Cool packaging. Um, it actually even almost looks like a belt around <laughs> the, cool the middle of the bottle. So if you're scanning the shelves and you're not seeing the title, maybe even look for that to stand out. Um, these are in no particular order either. These are just our top five. Number two would be Woodford Reserve. Yeah. That is just such a smooth bourbon. Um, go with, you know, just the traditional Woodford Reserve. And I think you'll be very, very pleased. Yeah, that's a great bourbon. Uh Number three, Old Forester 86, 86 being the proof. And so anything below 90 is going to be a lighter proof. A smoother, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Number four, Maker's Mark. That's an old faithful. The infamous dipped in red wax sort of top. So that's another one that if you're scanning the aisle and trying to find Maker's Mark, look for that really red waxy top that the bottle has been dipped in. I remember the wife was the one who came up with that idea of that couple. And I was thinking, isn't that just, I mean, we care about pretty packaging. So we do. And I've heard, have you been to that one? I've heard you can, you can dip your own bottle. Yeah. You can at the distillery if you're there for a visit, you can purchase one and dip your own bottle. So which is fun. And last but not least, Buffalo Trace. Yep. So Buffalo Trace is, you know, they have many bourbons underneath. Each of these brands yeah. do, but Buffalo Trace has some great ones yeah. in their brand. Yeah. So just look for the They're... standard Buffalo Trace, and I think you'll be pleased with that. So start yeah. there. There's those your are, starting point. Those are your top five, and um, I think you'll be pleased with any of those. Those are a few different price points, too. So whatever price point you're trying to hit. Something can be found in there. Okay. Anything else before we jump into today's topic? Well, when you try your five bourbons, you may want to have a little bite. That's true. To eat so you don't get woozy. Good segue, sis. (laughs) So we thought it's time to talk about food again. We love when we talk about food. We haven't touched food in a couple of weeks. So let's talk. And I think a lot of people are cooking more right now. I know I am. And um, trying new recipes and, you know. So it is fun to talk about food. So we're talking appetizers, Southern appetizers specifically. 
I love appetizers so much. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite dinner is to have like several appetizers. Me too. It's so fun and creative. I could do it probably two to three dinners a week. I could have appetizers only. I don't know if your family would love having appetizers for dinner every night. No, they would not enjoy that, especially not as much as I enjoy it, but... That's I what, just love because there's different textures and flavors, and it just makes it fun. Well, and it's to, very easy, actually, to, um, especially if you've already got them If prepared, you've got the basics, like, yeah. If and you're reheating or, yeah. yeah. So, um, it's comforting, though, to me. You know, I lo- know a lot of people would think of a pot pie as something comforting or casserole, something yeah. creamy. But to me, bar food and appetizers... <laughs> That brings the comfort. Do you remember my friend Sarah saying, uh, bar food's my favorite food group? Such a great quote. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. It's also, to me, tailgate food. Yes. And that is... Um, also something that warms our hearts. I was going to say, it, it just is so um, such a good emotional tie to those <laughs> sorts of foods. So, party food. Actually, you know. as is bourbon. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so, maybe that's why I like it so much. But, you know... We just thought, let's talk appetizers today. So we have our lists. We compared a few beforehand, and we actually didn't have... We didn't have a ton of overlap. Maybe half half of of our list. Yeah. Um, I've got my binder out, my appetizer binder. Again, y'all, I don't want to pick on my sis, but she's so darn cute with her three-ring binders, and there's post-it notes galore tabbing her recipes. What I'm going to talk about today. Yeah, so I will link to anything that I can find an electronic copy or version of from Lainey's collective list, um, as well as my own, if there's recipes specifically that we want to share. If I ever get to do a cookbook, which is uh, a heart's desire... How fun. I'll just pull out. I have, I think, eight binders Mm -hmm. and pull out all my treasures. Oh, your favorite. They're tried and true. Yeah. Well, I think we got to start with um, the tried and true pimento cheese. Oh, that's pretty classic Southern. We actually. our first episode. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Our very first episode, uh, nearly 70 episodes ago, was about pimento cheese. And we thought that was a good place to start on Southern culture. And it's a great place to start for Southern appetizers. So the key to pimento cheese. Shred your own cheese. Yep. Duke's mayonnaise. Duke's mayonnaise. Those are my two. <laughs> my shred your own cheese. I prefer Duke's. That's what I have down on my notes. That's so, awesome. um, if you had to choose between those two things, just at least shred your own cheese. If you don't have it matters. Dukes. Yeah. Majorly. It really does. Um, and I think extra sharp, sharp, mix is a really good one, but yeah. different people like different things. Yeah. I, um, I don't put a ton of like cayenne pepper or red pepper in mine just cause I have a family that likes it more Ooh. neutral. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if I was just making a serving for myself, I'd probably heighten okay. the spice a little on that. I typically use the Our Favorite Pimento Cheese recipe from Southern Living. It's a good and it one. it also includes toasted pecans. I just think it's oh, adds yeah, a it yummy does. little kick to it. It does. And then um, you can also bake. You can do baked pimento cheese if you want something that's hot. So that's nice. To change it up a little bit. Um, that one doesn't have the pecans in it. But um, it's really nice. to. I just have that handwritten from my friend Laura. I love but it. But you can eat it with veggies or crackers yeah. Um, but sometimes you want something warm in addition to your cold. Great point. Things, Great so. point. Yeah. Especially if this is your dinner. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. You go. Well, what about deviled eggs? We got to say deviled such eggs. A yes. Big, also Southern one. So the thing I love, I, I actually saw a post about this once is how many deviled eggs I can eat. Right. If you're eating breakfast, you only want one or two. One or two scrambled eggs. But if they're deviled, it's like four to five. I don't know how the jump. Yeah, seriously. But they're so good. We we just had some at Easter. And um, you would... Made them for our Easter meal and they were very good. Yeah, you would you could see variations. There's ways people are trying to, you know, kind of gourmet them up, if you will. But the tried and true deviled egg with just your... Mustard, yellow mustard, and, and mayonnaise, mayonnaise is now. I pulled so out. Good. This is one of my finds. That not that it's super secret, but s- smoked paprika instead of just plain paprika is like my favorite. Really? Okay. I like it on my deviled eggs. I like it in so many different things. In fact, a few things I'm going to mention here. So that's okay. why I pulled it out. Is that your brand you like too? I, the, that's just what you I had. Just grabbed one. Yeah. 
Um, this one's actually from España. I know. I see it's from Spain. <laughs> That's fun. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention about deviled eggs, I actually don't have a deviled egg plate. I don't either. So there's a new, there's there's an idea I have found that oh. I think is so clever. Okay. So there's a restaurant here called 1892 in Leapers Fork. Yeah. And their chef does their deviled eggs a little different. And I just thought I would mention this because I think it's so cool. Cool. So most of the time you see deviled eggs cut, you see the egg cut. Lengthwise. Lengthwise, yeah. I guess you yeah. would say. Yeah. Where it's more of an oval. Oblong. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Shape. Yeah. 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 He cuts his in ha- like down the middle in half. Okay. So still you're fixing it the same, but yeah, it's going to be. kind of more of a bowl. And when he makes his mixture of mm-hmm. his mayonnaise, mustard, etc., he puts a little down on the plate uh-huh. so that the egg will oh, stand up. Oh, wow. Isn't that clever? And it's just a really pretty presentation. That's a fantastic idea. So I just thought I would mention that. Love it. And he does use smoked paprika in yeah. his and, I mean, tops it with bacon. Are you Yum. So anyway, Yum. there's a little tip on if you don't have a devil deck plate like I don't. I love it. you don't. I love it. <laughs> it's a way to do it. It's so fun. Um, one of my favorite re- uh, recipes and appetizers is crab cakes. Oh, love me some crab yes. cakes, y'all. So I follow a recipe out of the Charleston Receipts uh-huh. cookbook. That's actually the re- Repeats cookbook is the one I have. Like the, these are the tried and true. And this is from the Junior League of Charleston. And their recipe is very basic. That's another reason I love it. Y'all know I love my simple recipes. It's literally just butter, flour, milk, egg, crab meat, Worcestershire sauce, poultry seasoning, salt, pepper, Ritz crackers to make your breadcrumbs. If you have good lump crab meat, don't mess it up. I was going to say, but you got to get you some good lump crab meat. Um, That would be the key because all those other ingredients are very pantry basic. Uh So... Yeah, crab cakes yum. are wonderful. They're hearty. It's a good source of protein. Yum, 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 yum. Love me some crab cakes. Now, I've got a few I've mentioned on here before. Is that okay if I continue well, yeah, to mention them again? we've mentioned all three of those things, I'm sure, before. We're just putting them all in one episode. <laughs> These are just classics for us. Um, so I have a little slider that I make that is tried and true. Everybody goes crazy over I them. love it. It's the Kentucky Hot Brown Slider. Yes. Um, so you make them on those little Hawaiian sweet rolls. Yes. And it's just a turkey, bacon, um, cheese kind of sandwich. But you make this topping that's Worcestershire and uh, butter and brown mm. sugar. Mm. And so it, you pour that over it and let it sit before you bake it. And it kind of just settles in that yummy sweetness in that sweet bread. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. You Do you refrigerate it? You well, refrigerate it with before that on. you bake yeah, it yeah. so that it kind of yeah. gets everywhere and mm. hardens. And, yes. Oh, it's glorious. Um, so that's one of my favorite. Well, wh- I love that one. While we're on sliders, I'll mention sort of a sister to that is the ham delights. Yes. Also, the key ingredient there is King's Hawaiian Rolls. That's You can't do it on any other bread. That is the key ingredient. And these are um, ham, obviously, instead of the turkey you just mentioned. Um, but, yeah, they are baked little um, just... With sandwiches of goodness. And these kinds of things are all gone if you take them to a gathering. Absolutely. If you want any for later, you better make two pans. That's true. There's not going to be any left. And they reheat well. So that's another good uh, appetizer to have, especially if you're wanting to make something that will last beyond whatever you're making it for in that particular event. Little sandwiches are just nice, too, because you can easily pick them up. They're filling. They are filling. you got to have some meat for the guys, too. But I will say I have sort of a very feminine sandwich, which, I, I mean, I'm calling it feminine because feminine, I just imagine them at every, like, shower luncheon. that I've been in, luncheon and brunch that I've been to, which is you got to have some sort of chicken salad something, right? Okay, so, yeah. Whether it be, like, kind of in a puff, if you will, some sort of pastry puff or, like, a little croissant. I'm using my hands to, like, kind of describe how many I'm imagining cris- uh, chicken salad things being because... Chicken salad, you can't eat a lot in, like, one big bite, right? So you got to make the sandwich itself small so the ladies at the luncheon you're at aren't (laughs) making a big mess on their face. But, yeah, I mean, something involving chicken salad would definitely be a southern appetizer to me. I would totally agree with that. Love, love, love chicken salad. 
Okay, I just pulled out of the binder to see where I got this recipe because it was like a cool little brochure. I see. This one is pecan. I'm going to mention it has pecans. Okay. But this recipe came from the Georgia Department of Agriculture. It's what? the Georgia Pecan Classics. Oh, my gosh. There's several recipes. I don't but... know if I'm going to find this one online, y'all. <laughs> I might have to take a photo. Um, and it says very good yes. next to it because we do that sometimes if something's very good so we remember. But it's just a pecan cheese ring. Yum. I love when you make this. And so it's just a cheese, like picture a cheese ball. You can even make it as a ball if you want, yeah. but it's mentioning it kind of in a ring yes. shape. Um, it's very basic as far as it's just the extra sharp and sharp cheese, onion, mayonnaise, red pepper. But what's kind of cool about it is on the outside, you put these chopped pecans mm -hmm. and then you can top it with strawberry preserves. So good. And I'm telling you the mix of, you know, I like different textures, but the cheese with the pecans and the strawberry jam on a little cracker is such a good combo. It works combo. every time. It works. So, it is the sweet and salty in your mouth all at once. That's yeah. my, one love, of my favorite love, love cheese one. ball kind of things to make. And pecans are very sad. I was going to say, even just pecans in general, I have down. Like a bowl of pecans, sugared pecans. Oh, or salt, or uh, spicy ones. Spicy There's pecans. There's so many wonderful ways to make that. I have that in my binder, but I've got to find the right tab. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay, I found it. So okay. my spiced pecans recipe... Um, it's kind of interesting because you take the pecans and you pour apple juice mm. over them and then you let them stand for 15 minutes. Then you drain and you put apple pie spice what? and salt and red pepper on them. So it's kind of a Ooh. sweet and spicy together situation. Yum. So that's my little. Those are spiced pecans. Spiced then. Pecan. Okay. I love that. And then I'll also, before we leave pecans, I would say the pecan bourbon ball. Heck yes. Is a fun yes. add to any gathering. Yeah. Um, I do have a recipe for that if you want to put that up. But it's, you know, toasted pecans, bourbon, sugar, vanilla, um, cocoa, corn syrup. So you're making like a little yummy yeah. sweet ball yeah. out of this gloriousness yeah and, um, my yeah, stomach's always... about to start growling from all this <laughs> discussion i'm sure y'all's are well i gotta mention sausage balls oh gosh yes i so, didn't put that down but yes well what's crazy is sausage balls to me are like the one breakfast food that can be served along with other non-breakfast foods on an appetizer spread so what i mean is like there's no way you could just put bacon strips out well, on an appetizer thing you would usually couple it with that's true something would you wouldn't just put it, eggs you wouldn't just put true. biscuits but sausage balls boom those could live alongside everything else we've already mentioned until they're gone which they do get gone yeah sausage balls are so hearty i and yeah wonderful i like coupling um like a mild sausage and a hot sausage yeah and mixing it all up together yeah. um but if you don't like spice you can just do a just mild the mild sausage. or if you're like me you can do just the hot but yeah i'm with you if i'm making them for a group i kind of like a mix yeah and paula dean's recipe has some sort of like i, I can't remember if it's mustard based or mayonnaise based i think it's a mustard based sauce that she puts beside her oh sausage I've never, balls I don't know that i've ever had them with which the we love mustard we love and, well we love mustard and sausage true our great aunt always put mustard on her sausage biscuit. And, and I do now too. that's what we do. So, so fun. Anyway, um, yeah, sausage balls, definitely a favorite appetizer. Well, in the pork family, mm -hmm. um, anything with bacon, like I would be one yeah. to grab those strips you mentioned just off the table. <laughs> but um, I love this bacon jam that I've mentioned before. It's so good. Is it hard to make? It's not hard to okay. make, though it does take. Um, one and a half pounds of bacon. Okay. Which is a pack and a half. Sure. You know. Yeah. So you're kind of committing to make a. So, and not, I don't know, remember how many ounces it's going to distill down to. Your I don't jam. I remember what I ended up with. It does stay in the refrigerator for three weeks. Oh, nice. So that's good. Because okay. what I did was that was a week that we were making several 
um, charcuterie boards. Yes. And so I just made a batch and then I had enough over the next couple of weeks for my little charcuterie boards I was doing. Yeah. So anyway, but it's maple syrup, brown sugar, onions, bacon. Yeah. I mean, all things good in one. Yeah. Skillet. Yeah. You make it typically in a cast iron skillet is the best way. That's so good. Oh, so. that sounds so good. Well, I'll mention a few seafood-esque appetizers. I did already mention crab cakes because it's so high on my list. Mm. I wanted to go ahead and talk mm-hmm. about it. But you got to mention shrimp cocktail, cold oh, shrimp good... cocktail, and just some basic cocktail sauce, which I like making my own cocktail sauce because I can then control how, how much horse spice, radish how and... spicy it is. Yeah. So, shrimp cocktail and oysters. That's definitely... I love a char-grilled oyster. Do you really? Mm. So, I've never actually served oysters. I'm not a big oysters fan, so I'm, I don't have, like, a go-to preparation to mention, but it's definitely a southern appetizer that's got to be... Especially coastal yes. places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I made smoked jalapeno poppers. You did. recently and they were so good. I think of that as very Texas. So yes. I know it's not southern specific, but um, it seems very Texas I would to me. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> Texans. Yeah. And um I already was gonna be smoking some pork and so I thought, I've got these jalapenos. I'm gonna get the stuff to make stuffed jalapenos. So I looked up recipes and found one that had tons of great reviews. Okay. And it's really yummy because you make it with cream cheese. Um, cheddar cheese and turkey stuffing. Oh, so you mix all of that and onion together, Yum. put that in the inside, wrap it with bacon. Yes, yeah. again, if it's smoked and it's wrapped in bacon, I'm gonna like Hey-o. it. Yes, so those were fabulous. That and is so fun. I shared them with three other people and they all thought they were great. So they would also add to the good reviews, to the good reviews. that you saw on that. That's correct. I love it. Um, I've made, I think they're just called asparagus rolls Okay. before. I haven't made them in a long time. Um, but just exactly what it sounds like. Asparagus wrapped in some sort of bread, usually Mm. like a, this recipe called for a wheat bread, but I've seen it where anything flaky, honestly, Okay. you could wrap it in. Um, and then cream cheese is going to hold, it's kind of like like a cream cheese mixture. I can't remember what else is in it. Is the asparagus already cooked? It is. Okay. So it's not crunchy and raw. Yeah, yeah. But okay. you do that sounds good. You do bake it again, so it's going to get a little okay. bit more cooked. Okay. Um, and those are good, and obviously a good vegetarian option, too, if you've got a lot of other, you know, seafood and <laughs> bacon on the table. That's this is true. a nice little something that's, true. that's almost like a sandwich, but it would be vegetarian. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think of Vidalia onions as very Southern. So Southern. And I have a wonderful spinach and Vidalia dip. Yum. I mean, creamy spinach. I was going to say. Spinachy dips are. I have some kind of spinach dip on my list. There's popular <laughs> spinach dips. They're all good. But I just like the pairing of bringing it in with the Vidalia. And I like to eat it with cucumbers. Because oh, they're good. Cool, you know, yeah. crunchy. And instead of just another cracker thing. Like, yeah. I, know, I think it tastes good with. You can serve it with crackers or. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. But I like it with cucumbers. That sounds so good. I The spinach cheese ball that I am used to making came from a friend of our mom's from way back when. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And it's just a cream cheese based spinach ball. But it... It has that nor vegetable yes. mix in it. That's a good one. Yeah. So I, it, and that might be it. That might be the three ingredients. Um, I always have a hard time because it does call for... Fro- you get frozen spinach uh-huh. and then thaw it out, obviously. And then you and have to drain all that water off of I it. I have such a hard time getting the water yeah. drained off of it. I feel like I waste all kinds of paper, paper towels. T- which are in hot demand at the moment. Yeah, I'm not making it right now. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, if anybody has any tips on how to better thaw out spinach that you need really, really thawed and dried out, let yeah. me know. But yeah, oh, I love a good spinach dip. I love a good warm spinach dip too. I don't have it on my list, oh, like but the artichoke. Do you, I was going to say, do you remember that, that artichoke? Jay Alexander's. Oh, is that who does it? Oh my god, they do a great one. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I've had some at different people's houses. Mm-hmm. The Gilberts made that one. That one oh, time, yeah. it was so good. It was a baked artichoke dip. I mean, honestly, the theme here is cheese, cream cheese. Though, <laughs> seriously, sign me up. 
So speaking of cheese. Speaking of cheese, I think one of the Southern staples when you think of just hospitality is cheese straws. Oh, yeah. For just sure. Very basic thing to have out on a table. Yeah. Um, you see them at a lot of showers and things. Yeah. But anyhow, just the very basic cheese straw. Most of the time it's in a long yeah, straw. Looks like a straw. Yep. Shape. Um, the recipe I use is uh, got sharp cheddar, butter, flour, salt, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika again. Hey. Yes. Which I just so love that flavor. Um, pepper and a pinch of garlic powder. Um, but there's actually a lot of different things you could do with a basic cheese straw. If okay. you want it to have a kick, you can dice up True. some jalapeno and do a spicier version. True. Um, you can do different shapes. Like, who says it has to be a long what? straw? Isn't I saw a recipe brilliant? that had, like, the cookie cutter stars. <laughs> so oh, it's yeah. the same dough, but you can make it whatever shape you want. Why have I never thought of this? Like, you could ma- match you it a- to whatever theme you're doing. Right. Like, this could be your thing that ties in your theme. Right. It's it's sh- however you- way. You have that thread of your theme going through the party. If I it's- love it. Isn't that cute? That's fun. Um, and then I even... Southern Living did a recipe, I think it was Southern Living, um, where they made the cheese straws and then they topped it with different seeds. So they had put, um, just to kind of make it a little different, sesame seeds, both black and white. And then um, I think they even put like pumpkin seeds. Ooh, I love pumpkin seeds. Just to kind of make it have like a little zip. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do different shapes. You could do different things in it. That is um, so fun. Things in it. To change it up a little bit. I love it. Those are great ideas. I have never thought of bringing variation. Jazzing up the cheese cheese straws. straws. And I will also say cheese straws make a great hostess gift. Yes, they do. And and they travel well. Like if you want to put them in a little jar with a cute little bow on it or something. Like that's a fun thing to take somewhere. Yeah. Or if you wanted to do homemade gifts or something like that. That's a great idea. Love it. There you go. Cheese straws. Um, And then, again, staying on the cheese thing. (laughs) We've been on it. (laughs) Um, That's one of my favorite things. I know. In fact, I've jokingly said um, about the five love languages. Cheese is my love language. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Um, Okay. Ready for this? Sitting down. Woodford Reserve Barrel Head Brie. Oh, come on. So, just to mention as we started this episode if woodford reserve is going to be one of your bourbons that you taste you've got it in your home now you have something we have something to pair it with so this glorious thing is you know how people will bake brie right and then put toppings on that warm Mm -hmm. brie so good how about uh bourbon with dried apricots golden raisins dried cranberries and dried cherries, which is going to kind of plump them up. Yes. And then put that on your brie with toasted hazelnuts and fresh thyme and parsley. I mean. My gosh. My gosh. I hear an angelic choir. (laughs) If everything that we have discussed today was located on a menu in one restaurant, I would frequent this place all the time. All the time. Maybe, yeah. I, I was going to say maybe we need to open one, but that's more. No, work I don't want to do that. Of do course, people, time. people are probably thinking this place <laughs> could be your kitchen, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's fun to have somebody else prepare it too. That sounds so good. Well, the next one, and it's the final one on my list that I'm going to mention, could be more you or described as a side dish, but I'm going to mention it as an appetizer because I have seen it on menus oh. as an appetizer. Mm-hmm. So fried green tomatoes, oh. also a great movie and a great book. <laughs> um, classic Southern staple appetizer or side can be, um, I don't know, best, I would say best prepared in a cast iron skillet. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just going to cover it in cornmeal. Um, you have your binder open to some a little bit different one variation but. of a recipe, but oh my gosh, in this picture, y'all, she's got. So I just I, I'm all about the presentation too, and fried green tomatoes taste really yummy. Yeah, but they're not necessarily the prettiest if it's just like no. thrown out on a plate. Mm-mm. Like they've looks been fried, a little greasy, and, yeah. you know. So I have this recipe where they take this coleslaw. 
put the little bit of the coleslaw down, just a mix of yeah. coleslaw. This particular recipe also has some mandarin oranges in with the coleslaw, but I don't think that's needed. You don't needed. have to do that, no. Just do the coleslaw. One fried green tomato. Yeah. A little bit of pimento cheese. Yeah. Another fried green tomato. A little bit more of pimento cheese. And hot pepper jam. Oh, so good. So it makes it have that nice little condiment. Yes. Already on it. Yes. It's a pretty presentation. You could do it as a, even like on a little salad plate yeah. kind of thing for each person or just one big plate with several. Yum. So pretty. So tasty. So yum. We've already said if you've uh, already got the hot pepper jam in your home, yeah. you can also just put some of that on cream cheese with crackers and it's so good. So good. So Christmassy to me for some reason. Maybe it's the color. <laughs> yeah, you could do red or green. Yeah. But I typically have the red yeah. version. But one other recipe I came across mentioning green tomatoes. This is not fried. Yeah, just green. Yeah. But it's grilled green tomatoes caprice. Mmm, so, so mozzarella. With the fresh mozzarella and basil. Yum. Just do a little um, grilled tomato with, it's, but just with the balsamic mm -hmm. and the basil and mozzarella, just like you would have um, a red caprice wow. salad. You can do a grilled fried. Wow. I mean, a grilled green tomato. Well, I did want to mention green tomatoes. There's, there's two types of green tomatoes. Those that are green when they're fully ripe, which is usually going to be like an heirloom tomato, uh -huh. it can be fully ripe and be green. And still be green. That can be used for what we're These describing here. And also nearly ripe green tomatoes, so they might feel even a little soft. They can be ripened in a paper bag, you know, on the countertop. But those could, a, a nearly ripe green tomato apparently could also be so you're saying Used. a tomato that will later turn red. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But when they're still not red yet and they're green, they're usually kind of firm. Yeah. Which makes them nice. Yes. For frying. Yes. So. Anyway. Ooh, I'm hungry. Well, I was going to say, that rounds out our Southern appetizers list and we got to go because now we're hungry. Um, <laughs> but I would love to hear if others um, have some Southern appetizers that are go-to in their household or a favorite that they've seen on a menu in a restaurant. And um, yeah, what, what else would we I'm say to our, our folks? Try something new while you're eating at home more than usual. Try a new recipe. Let us know if it's good. And yeah, um, I know I'm doing some of that. Now I'm kind of wanting to go make a version of a cheese straw. I know. I'm so inspired by your cheese straws. That was really very eye-opening. I don't know why I've never thought about that before. But anyway, hopefully we've inspired y'all as well. And um, again, go go check out our Instagram page. Get your entry into the book contest. Or give You're going to want that book. You are. There's also a lot of great recipes and ideas for entertaining and bourbon knowledge in that book. So, Cheers, y'all. Yeah. See you here next time.